Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I have a couple of housekeeping items. First, first, I want to thank all the members and supporters for making the trip out here to Midwinter Conference. This is the final session of the 114th Congress, and for those of you that like sports or are familiar with sports, I would probably say that this is fourth and ten right now um, at the ten-yard line, and we need to punch it home. We need this touchdown. There's a lot of bills out there, both in the House and in the Senate, um, that we really need to get across the goal line, and it would be great to be here next year to talk about some of those bills that have been enacted into law. But I'm going to tell you that we not only need your support, we need the support from the people that support us in your hometowns, okay? Um, one of the interesting things about these conferences and DAV uh, conventions, our members and supporters, and I've been coming to these for probably about 13 years now, is our members are very honest. If they like something, they're going to tell you. And if they don't like something, they're going to let you know as well. So I have a couple of takeaways from my last briefing last year, and these were some of the comments that I received. <clears throat> they said, Paul, your budget presentation, there's too many numbers to keep track of. Come on, tone that down a little bit. So I'm going to give you a synthesized version of our budget proposal, but for those sticklers that like numbers, we're going to have those posted on the website as well. So you're going to get two things to see. The second, they said, Paul, during your budget presentation, you focus on one side of the room. It's usually the side of the room with the projector. So I'm going to spread the love this time around. Okay, I'm going to move my way around like a, like a sprinkler head. All right. The third, the third, they said, Paul, you've been doing this for two years now, and you've been giving out $10 Starbucks gift cards. You're not keeping up with inflation. And what I would say to that, if you received DAV's alert that we weren't getting a cola this year, now you know why it's 10% again this year. So... <laughs> For our, quiz, for our quiz this year, I will have, again, uh, $10 Starbucks gift cards, and we'll lay out some ground rules uh, regarding uh, the quiz as we get closer uh, to the end. What we have right here is the cover page of my report, and <clears throat> what I would like you to see here is how the budget breaks down for the federal government. You have the largest portion of the federal government, which is our military. That's where most of our funding goes. But... Interestingly, you'll see who is second. Veterans benefits, $75.4 billion in discretionary spending for the VA, which equates to about 7%. So we are getting a bigger piece of the pie as time goes on. And that's outstanding. I mean, we've been in, in war for so long, and we've been fighting these issues for so long, it only makes sense that the budget needs to increase to keep pace with demand. Interestingly, uh, the military's budget is eight times higher than the VA's budget. <clears throat> Let's talk about what the budget is. It is a constant, moving, breathing, fluctuating animal with people throwing out numbers here, and this is how much we're going to spend. I want to talk to you about the independent budget, um, with, which DAV and, and VFW and Paralyzed Veterans of America, we compose. Basically, it's independent. We say that based on what we're seeing, uh, based on some of the gaps that are out there, this is how much money these programs need to function effectively. You have the president's budget request, as I like to refer to as the PBR. Uh, last year, some people called on that it also stands for PAPS Blue Ribbon. Um, so I was told this year I need to spell out that it's president's budget request and not the PAPS Blue Ribbon. Then you have the House Appropriations Committee the Senate Appropriations Committee, and then that will break down into the subcommittee that deals with Milcon VA in both the House and the Senate. And so you have all of these groups, us, you have the President and the Administration, you have the House and the Senate that say, no, this is how much we need to spend. No, this is how much we need to spend. No, this is how much we need to spend. And at the end of the day, coming close to uh, October 1st, all of these recommendations we hope line up, and nothing is, is, is too unbalanced. We're trying to arrive at, a, at, a, at an agreement between everybody. <clears throat> I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some key individuals uh, in the House and in the Senate. <clears throat> On the full House uh, Appropriations Committee with the leadership within that committee, we have Chairman Harold Hal Rogers. Do we have anybody here from Kentucky? Oh, that would have been good to have somebody to speak to their staff. Um, 
on the minority side in the house, um, we have the ranking member, Nina Lowley. Do we have anybody here from New York? Anybody meeting with her office? Yes, outstanding. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> and on the MILCON VA, which is the subcommittee from the full committee, we have the chairman on the MILCON VA subcommittee uh, in the majority, Charlie Dent from Pennsylvania. Anybody here from Pennsylvania? Here. Excellent. And in the minority, I know we have some people here from Georgia. <laughs> and in the minority, we have the ranking member, Sanford Bishop. Outstanding. <clears throat> I'm going to come back to why this is all important. I'm going to move into the Senate, <clears throat> and in the Senate, we have in the full Senate Appropriations Committee, we have in the majority, the chairman, Thad Cochran from Mississippi. Anybody here from Mississippi? Excellent. In the minority, I know we have some people here from Maryland. Uh, we have the minority vice chairwoman, Robert Mikulski. Yes. Outstanding. And then in the Senate Milcom VA subcommittee, Chairman Mark Kirk. And ranking member John Testa from Montana. Please forgive me, I left Mr. Kirk's state off there. Um, I apologize. Let me just give you some insight into why this is important that we're meeting with these key individuals. Not only are they responsible for legislation, but they, it comes down to how those dollars in VA will be appropriated, right? So if we have their ear and we tell them, listen, we know that this is the president's budget request, but this is our independent assessment and this is what is going on out there. This is how much the VA needs. If we can snag their ear so they can hear what, they're, what we're telling them, that gives us a great opportunity to get what we're trying to advocate for, okay? And it's important that once you meet with these folks, that you communicate back to us who you met with, how those meetings went, because then you can establish a contact between them and our office, which will give us a leg up, okay? Um, a lot of times when I have the opportunity to visit at um, different conferences or different department conventions and we talk about legislation that is moving and the grassroots advocacy, one of the things that I will say is that our staff could only take it so far. At the end of the day, what it really comes down to is our grassroots and our supporters because you're the ones in those states, in those districts that make sure that they hear our message. It is vital to our our efforts. <clears throat> the independent budget for fiscal year 2017-2018, well we released that on February 9th, 2016. The President's budget request, PBR, is due to Congress between the first Monday in January and the first Monday in February of each new year. And it was received by Congress February 9th, 2016, and this will be President Obama's uh, final budget presentation. And you can get information about VA's budget there, va.gov budget. The federal government's fiscal year begins on October 1st of every year. And DAV's successful advance appropriation campaign protects mandatory spending and VHA medical care. So when we're up here talking about why it's important to get a budget on time if we were successful with our advance appropriations initiatives, there is still some funding that has to be appropriated on October 1st, some discretionary funding. So for those of us that receive disability compensation payments, those survivors that receive DIC payments, education payments, the money that is turned on that you received every month, that's protected. But when we get into the bodies that's needed, the IT infrastructure that's needed, that is where the wrangling takes place. Are we gonna go up, are we gonna go down, or are we gonna keep it flat? For fiscal year 16, what did we recommend in the independent budget? We recommended $74.4 billion in discretionary spending. The president's budget request, $73.5 billion in discretionary spending. So what did Congress appropriate and what am I talking about for the current year? Remember, the current year, the fiscal year for 16 began on October 1st, right? But VA didn't receive its funding until December. So what we got finally was uh, $71.4 billion in discretionary spending, $91.3 billion in mandatory spending that came out to $162.7 billion in total spending. In the advance appropriation, we got $63.3 billion and $103 billion for mandatory spending. Our total spending right now 
for fiscal year 17. And again, this is what we're debating now. This is what we're talking about now. What is VA going to get for fiscal year 2017? Right now, it's projected to be $166.3 billion. <clears throat> what did we recommend for fiscal year 17? We said the VA needs about $84.4 billion in total discretionary spending, which was about $10 billion over the previous fiscal year, over fiscal year 16. $73 billion is for VHA alone. The president's budget request for 17, $84.2 billion into total discretionary spending, with $74.2 billion for VHA, and $3 billion in medical care collections. And where are we at with the House and the Senate? Well, right now they need to determine what is the budget going to be for the federal government. So we still need to get to that point. Then we'll get into what do they recommend in the House, what do they recommend in the Senate for VA spending, and then we have to come to an agreement. We have to work that out between both chambers. What did we recommend? Uh, some highlights from the fiscal year 17 IB budget. Staffing for compensation and pension services. I would be paying attention to some of this stuff because as you know we like to have a little quiz at the end. So hopefully you're writing some of this information down, not all of it. We recommended 1,700 employees for VBA alone. That would address non-rating activities, excuse me, non-disability rating acti activities, call centers, and fiduciary programs. The president's budget request only requested 300. So we got a difference of about 1,400 personnel. We recommended 158, voc rehab, uh, 158 for vocational rehabilitation services, zero in the president's budget request and uh, they've been flatlined over the past few fiscal years. We recommended $84.4 billion in discretionary spending, an increase of $4 billion over 16 or 5%. And for VHA, we said $73.5 billion for VHA healthcare, an increase of $2.6 billion over fiscal year 16, or a 3.6% increase. <clears throat> for construction, we recommended $2.2 billion. Last year they enacted 100, uh, excuse me, 1 billion, uh, excuse me, a billion, 1 billion, 600 million dollars. And for this year, only $900 million has been requested um, for construction projects. And this is important to note here off to the side. In fiscal year 15, VA projected it will take between 18 to $22 billion to close all current and projected gaps in access, utilization, and safety. VA is managing 30 major construction projects that are partially funded, some of which were originally authorized by Congress in fiscal year 2004. These projects need to be put on a clear path to completion. For medical and prosthetic research, the IB is recommending $740 million. Please forgive the, the typo right there. It should be 740. We'll get that corrected. And the President's budget request, $663 million. For VBA and the Board of Veterans' Appeals, we've been hearing a lot about appeals. We've been hearing a lot about the Board of Veterans' Appeals. So what did the IB say they needed? Together, they needed about $3.1 billion um, <clears throat> for fiscal year 2017. In fiscal year 16, they got $3.1 billion. And for fiscal year 17, the President's budget request only requested $2.9 billion. So we're off there. We need to bring those numbers up. Okay, I'm going to move into some of the quizzes, some of the questions we have for our quizzes. Just a couple of ground rules. Number one, if you shout out the answer, you have to buy Starbucks gift cards. Okay, or you have to do 10 eight count bodybuilders. So for those of you that were in the military, you should be familiar with what the eight count bodybuilder looks like. We're going to go ahead and rotate across the room so that we do spread the love this year. <clears throat> And I will begin, please raise your hand. I will begin with the first question. Here we go. The first question is, who is the chairman for the Full House Appropriations Committee? Back there. We have Hal Rogers. Survey says, Hal Rogers from Kentucky. Good job, sir. Here is your gift card. $10 to Starbucks. Come up and get it at your leisure. Joy, would you give that to him, please? Thank you. Good job. Next question. 
When does VA's or the federal government's fiscal year begin? Warren? October 1st. Good job, sir. Come on up. Grab your gift card. All right, so I was on that side of the room. Now I'm on this side of the room. I'm tracking. <laughs> Next. In the House, what is the name of the committee responsible for approval of appropriations? Sir, ma'am. We have appropriations committee. Very good. House Appropriations Committee. Come on up. There you go. Next question. I know some of these may seem quite simple, but I want you to remember these. I want them to be etched into your mind so when you're dealing with people on the Hill, some of this stuff is going to resonate. Next question. In the Senate, what is the name of the subcommittee responsible for VA's appropriation? We need some answers in this section. All right, don't say it in. Look. Over there, ma'am. Close. Sir. Say the whole thing. Very good. Come on up. It is the Senate Milcon VA Appropriations Committee. Next question. How many full-time employees did the IB recommend for VBA? Sir, in the middle? 1,700. Survey says 1,700. Come on up. Grab your card. Here you go. One. Two, and I believe we're up to our last question. Where does the IB recommend placing 1,000 of these new FTEs? Ma'am? Processing appeals. That is correct. Come on up. Grab your gift card. Very good. Just one final piece. You can find this and more, this and more information here at DAV.org events. It'll be posted here, and I, I thank everybody for their participation. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.